hello and welcome back so today we are going to start our android development journey and we'll we'll try to get familiar with android studio first so uh, without wasting any time let's just come jump in to the section so first of all uh, whenever you are going to uh, create a android studio project what you need to do is to create a new project uh, once you do that you need to find for an empty activity which is over here so select an empty activity from this section press next now this next thing is name you can name it your uh, app this first app that i'm going to create is the dice roller app dice roller app the second thing is the package name this is really important because this is a unique name uh, for your app uh, in the google play and in the android uh, phone where it is being installed so this should be this should be unique try try to uh, have a unique name for this unique package for the for the phone the next thing is the location of the phone a project where you want to place your project and then this language you can either write with android or java or kotlin and this is the min sdk so the min sdk means the minimum device that you are going to support so os version sorry and then if I'll, I'll just keep this thing by the way it, they are and then i'll finish it and once i do that uh the this specific um window will open up and from this section you can see this is the how the android studio will look and it will build for a while and once the build is being done now you can see then on the left side there are some stuff on the center and then on over here in the right as well so we'll go through each each of these things and one uh, by step by step uh, and uh, first of all uh, let's just go through this architecture like this uh, flow flow or the way the file are being placed so you can see uh, the first thing over here is this manifest file so an android studio have some manifest file and i'll explain it what a manifest file is then there is this java folder and then inside this java folder you can have this main activity which you created uh, an empty activity uh, we have these android test and this test so these are some unit test and instrumentation test that you want if you want to write and then another power part is this resources so basically by default android to generate some resources and in future if you want to add some resources let's say some images so those images and those kind of stuff goes into the drawable section the layout resources are the design and the ui element where the way you want to uh, design your app so all the ui related stuff will go over here into this layout folder you, you can create multiple xml file right now you can see this main activity and then this main activity xml so these two file are linked and how they are linked i'll show you but right now you can see that main activity has a xml file which is basically how this ui will be displayed then we have bitmaps basically these are for launchers so the launcher application sorry the launcher files uh, how this launcher of uh, of the app will look on the android uh, when we have this color file these are some constant values basically that you can use in in your code and uh, these are the same constant string you can place the string uh, and then this theme theme files are related to the theme of your uh, app what kind of theme you are going to use and then if there are some sort of extra backup rules and stuff that you want then you can also include those as well so uh, this is a little bit about uh, the project structure and then we have this gradle gradle scripts gradle scripts are basically the automation tool for building the um, application running it on an, on the phone and then uh, also running some tests if there are any so and also uh, uh, like getting all the dependencies and the configuration ready for you like uh, if i have to go through each and every component first of all since we are using <laughs> kotlin and this for this specific module is an application we will be using these plugins uh, one is for the application and the second is for the kotlin then we jump into the android configuration the, this is the namespace or a package uh, so basically this is the namespace over here then compile sdk this is the sdk version or the api version that you are going to compile with and then we have this application id min sdk is the minimum uh, sdk that you will be targeting if you remember we selected it in the 
um, while creating the project you can change it from here if you want then we have this target sdk the target sdk is basically the highest uh, that you are going to target version code is basically the number of version and then version name what you want to display so basically whenever let's say if you want to update another build to this you just can update it to 2 and maybe make it 1.0.1 .1. so that's how this thing will be working then uh, uh, this runner you can specify this is basically when you are actually writing some sort of test unit tests or maybe instrumentation test for that you are going to use um, what kind of runner you want to use so for, for for the default one we have android unity runner uh, then we have build types for now right now we have only release it can have a debug as well and so basically if you want to set different properties for different type of build types you can specify those over here and then this compile option in the compile option you can say the java version which is being used is 1.8 which means java 8 is used if you want to use some other you can also upgrade it to different versions and uh, then this they have this kotlin options and the kotlin option we have this jvm target to 1.8 as well uh, then we have dependencies dependencies are basically uh, the third party libraries that you are going to use or the component that you are going to use inside your application so let's say if i have to uh, integrate some another library what i, I i'm going to do is i'll add an implementation and then i'll add the library uh, package over here along with the version so basically this is how we are going to do it so let's say this is the library name and that this 1.5.0 is the package name and if you want to uh, add some dependency for the testing uh, section uh, over here let's say we android test and test so so if there are some stuff that is testing related and they that is specific to unit tests for that you will be using the test implementation and if it's uh, instrumentation test dependency then you will be using android test like over here so this is uh, how the gradle files uh, work uh, now I'll jump to the top again and I'll show you the manifest file. So basically a manifest file is kind of a, um, a file that contains the properties of the um, application. Uh, for example, uh, what, what, what kind of uh, properties do you want to set? Let's say we have a lava backup for this, which is set to true, then data extraction rules and some sub rules related to backup over there then what kind of app icon will be going to display on the map or oh, sorry on the app menu or oh, phone menu uh, oh, that is over here what what is the app name you can update the app name over here rounded icon then rtl are you going to support rtl with the right to left text yes true else false the theme of the application you can change the theme of the whole application from over here and then uh, there, you can have multiple activities multiple uh, other components and those should be registered over here there are some specific things that you need to register like uh, if you have activities you are going to register those activities over here else they won't work if you have uh, some other uh, broadcast receivers you have services you need to register those over here as well in case to run them so this is a little bit about the um, the the structure of the files that that are being placed and right now uh, if you see we have like this but if you go to the folder section it will be a bit different and why is that because you have this the way uh, different views that are available so you can here from here you can change it to different section let's say if you want to see the only test section then you will have only test folder over here but let's say if I want to go to project now this is how it is being placed on the folder section you have this app and then source then main and then Java and then file but if I switch to Android you can see that it is directly Java folder is being displayed so basically these are, these are some different kind of filters that are applied to help you out and the next thing is uh, about um, AVD manager so basically uh, a device manager is a kind of a, a emulator section where you can create a device so if you don't have any device physical device available what you can do is just create a device over here select the type of device you want uh, then select the OS version or API level that you want to select then next and then some other properties like portrait phone landscape you can also change it in the later but for for some startup orientation what kind of startup orientation do you want uh, and then if you finish it it will create an emulator and then you can just run that right now i have i guess one running uh i'm not sure where it is but it is running as well okay it's showing that it's running but i'm 
not sure if it's running over here okay so that's uh, a little bit about uh, emulator now uh, the next thing will be uh, some some bottom section over here you can you can see the version control the history of version control we'll discuss what is a word version control some to do's if you have any to do inside your code it will uh, show you over here uh, then you have if you have any any sort of problem with the files and stuff then terminal if you want to execute some sort of command line ex uh, uh, commands to so that you can use the this terminal for that then we have app inspection if you want to like do some sort of app inspection you can do it over here uh, locket really important thing and why is that because uh, you, you'll be using locket a lot to to see if there are if there are some crash reports that you can um, see how uh, the crash is being happening wherever the crashes are there so you'll be looking into those as well uh, and uh, if you want to log some sort of data you'll be logging uh, to, to debug like uh, there are two different ways you can either debug uh, directly by adding breakpoints or you can uh, log the values and see what what is happening so we'll be we'll be discussing this in the future as well uh, and then uh, app quality inside this is basically related to firebase so we'll just skip for now and then we have this build section this is where uh, the build related issues will appear let's say if you have any sort of issue all those kind of things will be over here and then we have this profiler a profiler is basically uh, you can oh, if you want to monitor different kind of stuff um, like uh, you want to monitor memory you want to monitor processing you want to monitor network so these kind of stuff you can monitor like uh, for, for, for performance of your application uh, but uh, that is also uh, something that uh, we'll be discussing in, in, in a very later stage of this development section. And uh, then we have these tags. If you have embedded emulator, you can see over here. But if you don't have an embedded, then it will be a standalone a separate emulator running on your phone on, on your uh, system. So this is section and then over here, if you see, we have this make project section in this tool and you can also do one more thing, uh, go to appearance and then if you enable this toolbar, it will add a toolbar over here. So this, this make it's uh, a little bit, a little bit easy for me uh, to go back for forth uh, and select different properties over here. So now if you have different modules over here and if you want to run a specific uh, different uh, module, you, all these kind of runnable module will come over here, uh, different configuration for different modules. And uh, then if you have device, like if you have multiple devices running, it may be multiple hard uh, physical devices attached. So you can also select device related to that. Uh, another thing is that if you want to run the application, I'll just sync it so that I can show you how you can run it. Let's say I have the simulator over here running and I want to run this specific application. What I'll do is I'll click, click on this play button and it will run the code inside the emulator for me. Uh, the next thing is this auto uh, apply changes uh, and restart activity. But what does it mean is that if you have one activity and if you apply some changes, so these is kind of an instant uh, instant activity load and then they they have this one more thing apply code changes it just apply the code changes to the to the running application uh, now this is another the debug app what it will do is that it will run the application in the debug mode so if you have added some sort of breakpoints and stuff it will listen to those breakpoints uh, and then this is profiler so you can profile the application uh, then you have this property which is called as the attached debugger so what uh, does it mean is that let's say if you have not run the application in the debug mode but you want to attach the debugger to it uh, you can actually debug uh, attach to it by clicking on this and then you see you have this uh, package name over here if you click ok it will open the debug and connect it to it so you can attach the debugger like this as well then you can stop the uh, debugger over here and if you have an app running you can stop it uh, this these are for the gradle and then you have this device manager and sdk manager device manager can be open from here as well and then on the right section as well uh, same goes for the package manager the package manager is basically um, the kind of uh, packages that you that are available to you and that uh, you can use uh, like over here you have this SDK tool that can be updated then NDK is not available right now SDK command line tool is not updated uh, we have some simulator API simulator and then uh, emulator which can also be updated SDK platform is there which is already installed to the updated version so th these are different kind of SDK things that you can do now 
uh, this was a little bit of uh, uh, the flow of the application uh, of how uh, it looks how this android studio is uh, you can use uh, we'll definitely uh, discuss more uh, as we go but uh, for now uh, this is a little bit of the overview of android studio uh, how it looks uh, and now uh, for the next uh, in the next video uh, what we will do is we will we'll try to write our first android application uh, so stay with us and I'll meet you in the next video.